Welcome to the Fat Man 56 channel. And today's trip, thanks to the boss for this Peterbilt. God, I want to get my own truck. But we need money for that. Today's trip is not that. We are going from Seattle, Washington to Fresno, California. Uh, to the Walbert. <laughs> not Wally World. And today's job income should be 22272 so let's get this party started. Turn it to the destination map. So uh, I think I'll listen to turn on the radio and listen to some, that umbrella guy. The Marvel writer wants Yellow Flash's thoughts and life. Move over, new warriors. So today I'm going to tell you the tale of a creator named Big Claymore. Now this is a guy, amongst other things, that decided to hunt openly for the docks of Yellow Flash. He was proud what? of himself too. Found out who Yellow Flash was. I mean, here he's bragging about it right out in the open. There's only one problem about that. Yellow Flash, he just happened to not be Matt Jarbo, aka Mundane Matt. Now, why is this important? Well, because mainstream comics is currently on the verge of collapse. Their only distributor, they're being phased out of the game. Redundancies are being made, meaning they're phasing out jobs. And creators, yeah, they're freelancers, so they don't get any money. Now, those same creators that have been nonsense for years, pushing out consumers by the droves. They want to talk about hard times. You don't want fans, positive. you won't get fans. They want to talk about you going out and showcasing how you are going to support them. If you don't, well, you're the literal scum of the earth, and well, F every single one of you. Get F. Thanks. Much love. See, this, this isn't supposed to matter. Nor is it supposed to matter when someone did the same thing to myself. No, now is a new day because these people need you. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that at all. So hey there, so today we return to that wonderful world of adventure. But before we begin, you know, in this <coughs> moment, I sincerely me. hope that you and yours is doing okay. And from our umbrella family to yours, I would say if you find yourself short on something, if you need help, reach out to folks, including myself. Because you know what? We're all in this together, and we sincerely love and appreciate all of you. Now, when it comes to this guy, B. Claymore, I had trouble deciding exactly where I want to start. See, when it comes to B. Claymore, he is definitely not a household name. But like a certain thing that keeps spreading out there, he has gotten around. I mean, he's worked for Image Comics, he's worked for Marvel, DC, Oops. Top Cow, Archie, Line Forge, VS, Okay, we're heading so south to California. Places. Now, additionally, and this is how Yellow Flash gets involved because he calls this out, this guy creates his own independent. Now you can see the page for it here from Kickstarter, and it did quite well, let me add, especially for its time. I mean, we're talking about B. Claymore again, a guy with not a lot of social media presence, and despite that, he picks up 648 backers, he picks up $20,794. This thing, it was looking like it was going to have quite a bit of success. If you look at the delivery dates here, too, you'll notice that it, it should be old. Had. We shouldn't be talking about this at all, because even if it was running behind, so on the road. this would have delivered somewhere around March 2016. The problem with that is, well, it didn't deliver. And the last time that B. Claymore actually logged into this was on February the 3rd, 2019, well, to, get out of Washington to basically for a while. sell the idea that, well, he's going to be logging in more and finally finishing up this project. Now you can see the backers, they are not happy about this either. They still pop in periodically. They still talk okay, about gotta go to the way station. Why? In comic books, the people that don't matter, they're right here. And people like myself, people like Yellow Flash, yeah, we point that stuff out. That's why conversations like this transpire. You can see Yellow Flash talking about Patrick Zercher, who I'll mention in just a minute. Michelle Perez, same thing. And also Tim Doyle. But when he mentions that, Pat Zercher, of course, can't help but get involved. We're talking about a book, and you're calling us scum. By the way, it has some advice so, about overcoming... I weigh 76,000 pounds. ...unworthy patterns of thought. You should check it out. B. Clay Moore gets involved and says, mm. Ah, also, once again, if anyone knows Yellow Flash's real name, hit me up with a DM. I won't tell him. You told me. Now, he continues <laughs> calling for this public saying there's a standing offer out there. Now, we've seen this type of behavior in the past as well. Look at Peter Samedi, for example. That guy was swatted 
Look what happened with my address got out there. We had property damage. So you can't yeah, that is fucked up. Is so many people are being hurt. Of flesh is alive. Now, Pat Zerger says wondering who he is is more interest than I have in him. Just hit blog. But then, B. Clay Moore says, ooh, I found out who he is. It's just good to know. He's been blocked for a while. And you'll notice through all of this stuff that Patrick Zercher is right there smacking on that like button. So at first, I think this is just smack talk or intimidation tack trying to get Yellow Flash, you know, back on his heels until someone links me this. The name you're after is Matt Jarbo, you know, a.k.a. Monday. Matt but he doesn't know that here. Yeah, you didn't get that from me. Peace. So noted, B. Claymore says. Thank you. Stays with me, but let me know if you ever need a favor. Now, as a brief aside to that, what kind of favor could they do for you? I mean, maybe they could strap on the high heels and get to work. Maybe you need to powder up that hand. But if we're talking about comic book industry or real life things, what exactly are they going to be able to do for you? Now, apparently, that elation, it only lasts for a few hours before B. Claymore hits him up yet again. I wasn't going to say anything, but I see Jarbo was a victim of swatting once before by some gutless gamer. Swatting got an innocent guy in my hometown last year. I'm not sure sending people after innocent dudes is the coolest move, amigo. Anyway, three other people dropped Yellow Flash's name, so I appreciate the effort. Now this, it poses a couple of questions for me. Like, what exactly was he looking for when he looked up Matt Jarbo, a.k.a. Yellow Flash, in quotations? I mean, you looked up Jarbo the guy's story, but you don't Flash, find yeah, the swatting so. thing right off the bat, and he contacts the guy really, really soon. I wonder what keywording he was utilizing, and I wonder in that if somebody was like, whoa, hold your horses here, might not want to do that, sport, because you know what, it's already been attempted. Maybe you got the wrong guy. Now, after chatting with the person that sent this, that was actually part of their intention, because not only was adding Mark Jarbo to it funny, but you start adding in Matt Jarbo, boys in blue, yeah, there's a problem right there. And that person says, yeah, dumb A. So now the authorities are on alert for people trying to do this doxing S. Of course, if your intentions were benign, it wouldn't matter, would it? Which is exactly what he needed posed to him. So you keep saying, hey, I'm going to go to his house and have a talk with him. But again, you know how exactly these people are. Now, B. Clay yeah, okay, responds with a grow up boy because you know he thinks he's in phantasm or something. Boy. Yellow Flash is a coward and a moron who thinks slandering people will make him popular for once in his sad little life. I know who he is. We'll chat at some point. Now, the next thing that I'm going to showcase is proof of malicious intent. Because you know what? This isn't that guy's first rodeo. Oh no, far from it. If you go out and you search B. Claymore's name, you'll have things like this here. This is from Bounding in the Comics, by the way. Check them out for sure. But writer B. Claymore claims no one threatened diversity in comics, and he's instantly exposed. Now, you have to excuse the quality of this screen grab, but you know what? This is a millstone around the comic industry's neck. Not just B. Claymore, but the entire industry. It's behind the scenes look at what these folks do when they're together. You have representatives of every comic book company associated mess. Take Taylor Esposito, for example, the guy who decided as a letterer he would go in with an Atari comic and a Dynamite comic, and he would hide insults about someone in it because he didn't like the person, he didn't like their politics. Jody Hauser, who was tied to Spider-Man and also oh, tied to all the road. consumers that actually wanted to have a Love you. One so mile. those creators and more, they so get almost to behind the scenes state to line. dump on Richard C. Meyer, well, Vancouver State Line. Comics really because he's going to NYCC, and they also talk about anonymous fans, aka normal people buying comics that don't want to lock lockstep, and how horrible they are, and how they wish they could be getting kept out. Then they get to this part. The last thing Meyer is going to do is get violent, them noting that he's not going to do anything at a con, but I'd love to follow him around trying to goad him into throwing a punch. Taylor Esposito says, I'd love to yell one punch after you level him. You know what happens with all of these incidents, too? Whether that be trying to goad people into violence, whether that be hiding language so you can insult people, nothing. Absolutely nothing. The comic book industry, it says, hey, we're not going to do anything at all. It 
doesn't matter if it's the big stuff like having a yellow flash or stuff that reflects current year like hey going out attacking females telling them you you don't agree with me therefore you can't oh that. that's speed that's why people like Pat I hate it when the speed limit changes like that politically divisive rhetoric like you see in front of you can get into pylons with people like myself you can see another creator here Richard Pace you can see B. Clay Moore getting involved in this all because people like myself we stopped spending hundreds of dollars and we let it be known and you know what none of that has really changed not really when you look at statements like this people who think it's cool to jump into threads about positivity during hard times with the express intent of being an a-hole or on your work or the end of your jobs are literal scum i know life is hard and i truly hope you and your families are safe but from the bottom of my heart and with the deepest sincerity FM damn lost i have no idea where we are wash your hands take care Can't of your family washington or oregon or lebanon rock lane and with all your newfound free time get out thanks so much love now when i look back at the associations in the comic book industry to see things like this or the associations from people talking about that there's donny cates here's tim doyle here's also tim doyle and some of those wonderful threads i always think about how they haven't changed but the setup has and you know who can get effed in that i guess they can because that f there stood for freelancer and yeah you ain't gonna get nothing for it but anyway you tell me what you think so closing i want to say thank you see these folks they forgot a valuable lesson you make it never as possible not them and I want to thank you for spending your time here. I don't want to monopolize it on, but I do want to thank you for it because well, I don't mind having my time monopolized by I you. I also want to say, really if you guy? like this channel, go sub to it and I'll let you know that drill by now. But you just being here, that does matter. So, <coughs> I do me. appreciate it. Again, we do videos usually every day, sometimes twice a day. Check those out, and I'll leave with that. And a thank you. So who's next? Or what's next? What did the YouTube say? Well, drive, don't look at your phone. Don't drive. Oh, I wonder what uh, what's next on the YouTube list. Maybe I should check out Yellow Flash. See how he's doing. Or see what he's doing. Got 770 miles lonely road. Well, Yellow Flash has video. God of War director slams idiotic NPC Puritan defends Kratos and dumps him. So I was originally gonna do a video on just As this I'm article. The road. <laughs> don't drive and talk to. on your phone. Because the director of the game series decided to come out and defend it himself, and he has some really awesome takes. He's out there slamming NPCs like crazy, and it's it's a beautiful thing. So I definitely want to highlight that. But here's the thing with God of War. So PS4 God of War came out like what, be on the two years side. ago. Great game, by the way. Car snuck awesome up into me in my blind spot. Probably one of the best games on the system. And in my opinion, the best game in the series. Because it took the series in a new direction in a lot of ways. Because if you've played the old God of Wars, they're big button mashers. And while they're fun games, that's not my favorite type of gameplay. God of War PS4, though, is. That's a great game. But unfortunately, crazy NPC Puritans decided to, you know, of course, try to dis dissect that game in their own weird ways. Because, well, you know, they don't seem to understand how when you get older and if you have kids you change as a person and kind of you know grow and so on and so on well at least if you're healthy you do and they decided to make that seem like well now he's not a toxic man and all this stuff it's really strange so oh, they've been out there speed. using this game to push their weird little agendas and it would seem that the director he doesn't quite care for that and he's been firing back at them saying kratos was never a misogynist, which I agree with. Let's get into this. I would know I haven't played God of War. For three hundred years. We prepared. We were Only 
had a PS2 and a PS4. I skipped the PS3 because I don't have mountains of money. So the big thing with God of War that these Puritans are always going after is that famous scene where you're first playing the game and, and Kratos is with two ladies and you do a mini game and you collect health orbs during it, by the way. It's really funny, okay? And you get an achievement when you're done. And to the normal person, that's funny. You know, it's just a joke. It's just a joke, man. But of course, the NPC Puritans, they have problems with things like that. And they call it misogynistic and toxic to do that. So, welcome to now, Oregon. We're in Salem. Where this was all Salem, you know, Oregon. done with consent and everybody was clearly having a good time. I don't understand how that's toxic. Now it would be toxic if he were to forced his way into that situation, but that's not what happened. Everything was being enjoyed by everybody there, so it's not really a bad thing, but of course these Puritans see dudes hooking up with women in any regards whatsoever as toxic, and that's kind of the problem. Just hooking up is toxic, and that's Just really the issue toxic. with these that's people. So that's why I like to call so them wrong. Puritans, is because, well, they have problems with big boobs and stuff like yeah. that. So... It's kind of a problem in itself, and they they want to use their platforms to kind of push stupid takes like that, and that helps. Yeah, they want to use their platforms to push their religion. Of so of equality, which so really... the director of the game took to Twitter to give his opinion. He said, "I must continually state that Kratos was never a misogynist in God of War One, like at all, and it ticks me off." Journalists continue to retcon the game in order to justify the thesis of their God of War 2018 stories, and he links the article there. So then some clown's gonna eventually come in there and start arguing with him, but he says this first, let me be super clear, in case it wasn't. Me putting the word journalist in quotes implies the guy sucks at his job. I think based on this article that he does. Don't worry, David, I don't think anyone disagrees with you. Uh, the guy definitely does suck at his job, but here's the thing. Most people in game journalism suck at their jobs. I mean, go watch them play video games where they can't even do jumps or they're like falling off or they're like sitting there <laughs> shooting a wall. Like they're obviously not gamers. Most of them are just using their positions to try to get to an outlet they really want to be in or so they can co-op nerd culture. That's really what's going on there. None of them are Yeah, they want to bully the that's nerds. That's a fact. I'm that's a nerd. I'm being bullied fact. by these guys. So... Andy, so, the return social justice warriors, comes in and People says, isn't the first mini-game you double-teaming a couple of what days off-screen? Exactly, and this is the point they always make. Uh, like, that's toxic. And David comes right in, right in with the donk, and says, yep, although, A, if it were double-teaming, wouldn't that be two guys and one lady? Your term, so you tell me. Oh, you hey, know again. How is having a three-way misogynistic? And that's a really good point that I said at the beginning of the video. How is that misogynistic? Everyone's having a good time. No one was made to do it. Why is that toxic? Okay, if everybody's having a good time, what's the big deal? This is this is the thinking of the Puritan. Okay, they see everything. You're not supposed to hook up with the opposite gender. That is toxic all the that's way true. through. Been and there. that's literally what they've all been pushing forever. Like, it's it's bad to do that. It's bad to even go approach a, way, like a lady. You can't even go say hi to them. You've seen that Gillette commercial. Remember the Gillette commercial for razors? The Gillette razor commercial that's supposed to appeal to men decided to put a video out showing a guy trying to approach a woman and another, some other dude comes up and stops him like, whoa, 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 bro. You're not even allowed to go talk to them kindly and friendly. That's toxic. That's misogynistic. This is literally the thinking of the NPC Puritan. That's why I call them NPC Puritans. So, he doubles down on this. He says, okay, I'll explain. It's deeply misogynistic to have the first two women you see in the game be little objects that you can beat with a button mashing combo. It's a depiction of women that is objectively and intended for the male gaze. Quite literally, misogynistic. So it comes up, it comes Ooh, up says, in, the game, in that very scene, Kratos writes in his journal about how he is losing himself in wine and meaning 
Douglas hookups do not Six. dispay. The character may not respect women. I would not be so sure about that, he puts in parentheses. But the game certainly does. Also, looking at a woman as a actual being, and only a actual being in the act of having hookups with them, not out in the world, is not misogynistic when you when you get it on. In between every few thrusts, are you telling her how, sh how smart she is and how much you love her cooking? Sometimes it's okay Ooh, it quite healthy even to just hook up with people. <laughs> and I 100% agree! But see, you can't, you can't, you can't reason with people like this, okay? Because I don't think this guy is hooking up with people. I'm just going to be honest here. Don't think that that's really happening. I see that he's a radio that's host. That's a rest stop and no and gas. He's a free leftist. So, naturally, uh, I don't see children coming from this, from this genetic line or anything like that. And uh, puts out articles like this. I was a cable guy, and I saw the worst of America. So That's you're arguing, guy. you're arguing with an NPC journalist. So it's not really going to go anywhere. This is a dead end. <laughs> this is a dead end argument. But I appreciate the content for the channel. I really do. So he made a good point. It's not. It's not toxic. Okay. It's healthy to hook up. Okay. That's what people do. Almost you could say that the survival of the species depends on it. But that's not the way that the NPC Puritans see it. There's little, literal arguments that a dude and a dude can have a baby right now. So, I mean, <laughs> there's not really much, there's not really much dialogue to be had here. So, anyway, his rebuttal here. To keep the comparison going, whereas in God of War 2018, the first female you see is a strong, individualistic, multi-layered character that seems to have her own aims and motives. The original God of War is a little marvel. It's a literal marvel, but it is deeply misogynistic. David Strikes Back says, well, I just told you how it wasn't. You can think it is, and that's fine. I respect oh, your view. Oh, station you know, coming up. You are recalling it wrong, but my rebutting... But you rebutting my examples by simply restating your view doesn't change my mind. He says your example makes them more misogynistic. They are just pawns for Kratos to beat in order to convey this feeling you're suggesting. And I think it's that you are suggesting there. This guy's a journalist, by the way, a games journalist. But I do believe it's you oh, are. Oh, bypass. It's green. Never it. mind. Objective I don't have to wait my agency. truck. Literally I did this off. Awesome. And they are oh, simply because sometimes. they are women who can bang. I don't know how else to explain it. And David I fires back. Scale by your logic, every character in the story must not only have their own detailed backstory, but that backstory must be conveyed in the telling. Utterly ridiculous, and 90% of stories would fail your test. Not including what you feel... Not, not including what you feel you need for something to not be misogynistic is not the same at all as a story that contains misogynistic elements. I'm done with the discussion. Of course, I support your right to have an opinion, even though I think it's terribly incorrect. Stay healthy out there, sir. Ends it with a nice little thing. So, I just, I find it funny how far these people will go to push these narratives, and I'm glad that David stood up for himself and didn't bend the knee. It's nice, yeah, and I would good. like to see more of that. I almost fall by the game now, Because the only way to shut up these people but... is to do stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, and you have to support them because these people run the game's media, and they'll sit there, and they'll probably cancel him. I would expect to see about 40 articles now. Probably you're going to see some from IGN. You're going to see some from CBR for sure. Probably by that Anthony guy. I'm sure he'll do an article on that real fast. Uh, you're going to see one from for sure Polygon and Kotaku. They're probably going to go after David now because hooking up is wrong and it's toxic. Okay, you're, you're not supposed to hook up. It's going to be like in, have you ever seen Demolition Man? All right, you should go watch that. Or was it Ju uh, Judge Dredd? Judge Dredd was good show. It's always but Demolition Man. In one of them, Stallone hooks up with, uh, I forget her name already, Sandra Bullock. But first off, instead of them actually hooking up, they're like wearing like VR headsets and stuff. That's a demolition, man. Like, what the hell is 
with food. This is a really funny scene. That's literally what these people want. Okay, that's where they want things to go. It's very strange, but this is the mind, and this is Time this to get is some the gas. mind of thinking that these people have, and that's where they want to push society. And it's disgusting, and most normal people don't want it, and most normal people don't agree with anything these game journalists Oops, have to rest say. Up that Unfortunately one. for them, no one's reading their articles. I think the only people that do are YouTubers that make fun of them because their websites have to borrow money all the time to stay afloat. They're literally on the verge of getting canceled all the time. So it's only a matter of time until all these websites go under, and then maybe we can get some normalcy back in gaming. That would be most sweet. Most people back go to you know, YouTubers for gaming news. I know I go watch like Young Ye and stuff if I want to get game industry news. I don't go to IGN. <laughs> it went to IGN forever. And uh, I think that's most people. Well, I, yeah, I don't go to these websites either. because you would want to see Ooh, what the wrong you know, way. a game developer had to say. Now, in most cases, you can just go to Twitter and follow them directly and hear what they have to say. So it makes it makes places like Inverse. Thank God I'm not driving truck in real life. It really does. So anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, go give go give uh, David Scott Jaffe here Jaffe. Go give him a follow. And a like on his tweets, like he deserves it for standing up to these clowns. Anyway, like, subscribe, leave me your comments, let me know what you're thinking about all this. Uh, share the video, make sure you still subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. No, we're not resting Also, yet. take a moment. Make sure you're still subscribed still to the channel. still got ways to go. There's something going on right now. Man, I'm just doing everything ass backwards here, aren't I? Just take a second and double check on that. And subscribe if you're new. Okay. So, I'm going to take up... Oh, let's just take it up. I've thought this half of the trip. And... See and do some more stuff because I try to keep my episodes to half an hour each. So thank you for coming by. Have a good day.